Hello. We are going to cover file input and output streams in this series of video tutorials. So this is the first one that we'll begin covering our class lecture notes and then we'll intersperse that with writing different programming examples so you can get an idea of how to handle files. So we've been working with streams since the beginning, right? We've been working with C in and C out. And a stream is just defined, an input stream, there's just some information or characters that are flowing into the uh, program. In our case, we've been working with CN, right? CN has been tied, that stream has been tied to the keyboard. So we know that when we type things on the keyboard and we use CN to read that information in, right? That comes into the program. When we use C out, that is tied to the output stream that goes out to our console terminal window, right? Well, we don't always want to have to enter all our information uh, from the keyboard. We want to enter it from a file sometimes, or we might not want to not only print something out to the screen, we might want to write information out to a file, so we want to learn how to use to the file stream objects. Right? And C in and C out are technically called stream objects. They're already declared for us. We don't have to declare them, right? You can just think of an object for now, right, as a variable that's an in so ver Objects are variables that are instances of a class, right? But we have not created classes, so that might not make sense yet. That might make more sense when we get to the chapter on classes. Just know that a class is its own data type, and class, classes have mem or member data information, and they have member functions. Right? And so when we've been using like set f, set flag, and some of those functions of C out, we've been using class functions associated with that. Right? This lecture is not about classes. We'll see that when we're working with file operations, we're going to need to declare file streams. And those will be defined in this header file, fstream, so file stream. And specifically, we'll see that when we're working with input file streams, we're going to declare something of type ifstream. When we are working with output file streams, we work with ofstream. There are some file streams where we can have, where we can both read from the file and write to the file. Usually we'll work with an fstream object for that. Uh, but in this particular uh, point in our class, we're just going to work with ifstream and ofstream. We'll see then that we need to open files. We'll need a file name in order to open the file and that will associate the stream object with the file. We'll also learn that we need to check to make sure the file is open correctly before we go ahead and use those file streams for whatever input and output operations we're going to perform. And then whenever we're done with a file, we close it before we terminate our program or before we leave, if we, before we leave a function. It all depends on how our program's written. Right. But we need to declare file stream objects. We didn't have to formally declare C in and C out. They're already given to us. But now we're going to create our own objects. So like I said, we're going to include fstream. If we want to declare an input file stream object named in file stream, We'll use the, it's in the standard namespace, so standard double quote colon, so the scope resolution operator here, IF stream is the type, and then we follow the identifier naming rules. So here I just gave it the name in file stream. We usually don't give them names that long, we use something shorter. Same way if we want to declare an output file stream object named out file stream, here's an example of how we do that data type, variable name. When we work with files in C++, it can handle text files and binary files. Typically, we'll be working with text files in this course. All right, text files are created with a text editor. So when you write your programming code, your source code, you're using a text editor. Right? They don't have any sort of uh, formatting characters such as bold, italic, underline. You can't insert images. So they, are, they just contain plain text, and there are other text editors as well. Notepad, Notepad++, there's tons of text editors, right? If you wanna think of a text file as an array of characters, that's what it is, right? Everything is written out basically in character format. It's character equivalent format. Think of it as if you were to open up a book and read a page from a book, right? There's just an array of characters there, one after the other. When you read it in, you make sense of the information that's there. 
So if in a text file, we wanted to write out the base 10, so decimal base 10 integer value of 123, the way that gets written out in a text file is that will be written out as three separate bytes, right? The character one, the character two, and the character three. And if we were to re look at the contents of the file, the numeric contents, well, we know from the ASCII table that the character one is a decimal 49, two is a decimal 50, three is a decimal 51. If we were to go deep into the binary representation, these are the binary representations for 49, 50, and 51. The other type of file is a, is a binary file. It is just a stream of uninterpreted bytes. Right, when we write it out, it will get written out depending according to the data type we're using. And of course, when we read it in, we have to know how that file is structured so we can read those bytes in correctly right, to interpret them correctly. So let's take a look at an example. If we were going to write out then an unsigned char, so if we had something that's a type unsigned char, the number 255 is stored in that data type, then we know an unsigned char is one byte. So it would write out eight one, so eight bits in a byte, one byte. This is the representation of the number 255. But now if that 255 was stored in the variable that was type unsigned short, and unsigned short uses two bytes. So it would then write out this higher order byte that's all zeros followed by the lower order byte right, of 255. So this is how we represent 255 in a two byte format. Similarly, right, if we have an unsigned int that requires four bytes of memory, if we go to write out the unsigned int, the four byte representation of 255, or these three high order bytes are filled with zeros, the lower order byte is filled with one. So we would see something like this. Now typically we can't open up a file and look at the binary. If we wanna look at binary files, what we typically do is use something called a hex, a hexadecimal editor, which then interprets the binary to hex and makes it a little more human readable than just reading these long strings of zeros and ones. But know that in your binary file, things are stored as these strings of zeros and ones. And comparing the two, so text file versus binary file representation, we want to know how the number 1,234 is stored versus the character string 1, 2, 3, 4, right? And so if it's a binary file, what happens in the binary file then, the number 1,234, well, this is a four byte representation is converted into bytes. We can see then that this is the binary representation for 1,234. This is actually two to the 10, which is 1024, right? And then add 210 to that, this is 210, right? Decimal 210 representation in that. So this is 1,234. So if we were gonna write this to a binary file, right? That integer value 1,234 would be written out in four bytes, it would like this. But if we were writing it to a text file, what would happen is the character one would be written. So here's the binary representation of the character one. I'm referring, the ASCII 49 refers to the ASCII decimal value. Here, this is 50, remember that's ASCII for character two. All right, character three is 51, and character four is 52. So they're written differently, right, depending on whether they're text or binary files. And of course, you have to know that, right, what the file format is when you read something in. All right. When we open files, we're going to call a function called open. Not so hard to remember. Open a file, call a function called open, right? That particular function then requires an argument. It's the file name. Makes sense. We want to tell it what file we want to open. And then we have to tell it what mode. Do we want to open it for reading, writing, appending? So here are some mode flags down below, right? So if you use the mode APP, append mode, what that does is that moves the uh, stream's position indicator, that pointer over to the end of the file, and every time you were to write to a file, so this is associated with writing, append is, you always write to the end of the file if you open it in that mode. Right. There's another mode called ATE, which can be used for reading or writing. What that does is it sets the stream's position indicator to the end of the file upon opening. Right. Um, we won't work with uh, pointers. There are ways to move the file 
stream indicator around in the file. Uh, we won't likely be doing that in this course, and so you won't be using ATE, but it's available. If you want to open a file for binary mode, so whenever we open a file, by default, it's going to open it as a text file. We would have to use this mode flag, BIN, to open it in binary mode. And these flags, you can have more than one flag in here. You can use a bitwise or to or these flags together. All right, typically what we're going to do is we're going to open files for reading. So in mode, input mode, open files for writing, output mode. Truncation mode, like I said, if the file already exists, the contents will be truncated before opening the file. All right. We can also then combine opening a file with a declaration step. So remember then our object types are going to be IF stream and OF stream, and these classes have been defined with multiple constructors. So whenever you create an object of that type, by default it calls a constructor. So there is an initialization constructor that will construct the file stream object, associate the file name with the stream, and open it in the mode specified by the mode argument. So if we use, and then some of these have defaults. So the IF stream and the OF stream have defaults, right? The default mode for the IF stream is input, OF stream is output, right? So in this case, if we declare an IF stream object named in file, and then as the first parameter, we put the name of a file. So the name of the file needs to go inside of double quotes, right, a string of characters. It would open it by default for input mode. Right? We don't open IF stream objects for output mode. Same way OF stream, its default mode is output. So we declare something of that type. We give the identifier a name. We give it a file name, and it opens it by default in output mode. We don't have to specify that. So that's just more of a shortcut way to open a file, right? And as I mentioned earlier, there's another class called fstream that has a default mode of both in and out. So you can read to it and write from it, right? So a couple of different ways, like I said, here's one way you can open it. Reminder by default, C++ is gonna open the file in text mode. So if we declare a file stream object and then we call open and give it the file name, Right, that uses the default argument, which is the same as if we call infile.open, give it the file name and specify the mode argument. So most of the time you're not going to see the mode argument specified because we'll be using the default mode for IF stream. Sorry. Similarly, for the output file stream, when we open that, if we use the open uh, command, we just give it the file out the file name we want to write to, and then we'll use the default mode. But otherwise, if we wrote out file.open and then ios.out that mode operation, these two are equivalent. After we open up, sorry, we're going to want to check to see if a file opens correctly. This slide um, goes back to the idea that these streams have different constructors. So for the input file stream, the default constructor would be if we just go ahead and declare something of that type, it will call, and I misspelled constructor, I need to fix that, we'll call the default constructor, which simply creates an object of that type but does not associate it with any file stream. Right? We have to declare open after that. Otherwise, these initialization constructors, right, there's a prototype here, which is too complex for what we've learned at this point, but in this prototype, just know that when you declare this, give it a file name as the first parameter. We can see that the second parameter is a default argument, right? It actually defaults to this equal sign says, if there's no parameter argument given for this argument, go ahead and default or assign this input base mode to this. Right? And so, like I said, here's an example down here. We declare the type, write the object type, declare the name, and give it the file name. Right. It'll make more sense, hopefully, when we use it in code. And so the next thing we want to do is we want to check to see if the file opens. So let's just go ahead and start working on a program. Right. Let me minimize this. I've got Visual Studio up here. Right. I've got a project that I named File Tutorial. I've got a CPP file in it. As a matter of fact, I'm just going to open up 
So I didn't call it file tutorial, I called it file lecture. Now when I created then this project, right, by default, this is where Visual Studio stored it. Here's a solution folder. When we click on that, we can see inside that Visual Studio declared uh, .sln, their solution file, and then they declared another folder in there with the, because my project name was the same name as my solution name, file underscore lecture. And here it, they, it always makes some, ex, some files it needs for the project environment. But I wanted to show you all I've gotten here in terms of a file, here is the CPP file. I don't have any sort of output files yet, nothing like that exists. All right, when we write something to a file, we're gonna come back later and find out where it writes to the, that file. So, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to actually end up writing something out to a file. Well, I'm going to say, let's include the OF, sorry, we include the F stream library, not the OF stream, I tend to do that. I think of the OF stream object and include the wrong library. All right, and int main, right, here's our good old C++ file. All right, so we're going to declare and output a file, output stream object. Standard namespace, OF stream. All right, I'm just gonna call this out file, and we'll go through an example here of where I just declare it. So now if I've declared it, we haven't opened it, so let's, open the file for writing. So I'm gonna say out file, that open. I'm gonna give it a file name and I'm just gonna call this oh, write example. And you don't have to end these with .txt. You'll, sometimes you'll see them ended with .dat for data. Sometimes you'll see them with no file extension. I'm just going to give it the file extension txt here so we can remember that these are text files. Right? And I'm going to use the default argument of output. All right. So that should be enough then to open the file. Not enough to write to it. Before we try and write to the file, we wanna to check to see if the file opens. So we're gonna say, did the file open? And the simplest way to do that is to use the not, the logical not operator, use the name of the stream object, out file. And if I say not out file, if this is true, so there's actually this operator has been overloaded and it's been defined in the class that if the file does not open successfully, it's going to return true here. And so here then, if I hover over this, you can see then it's referring back, you might be able to see, you probably can't, the print is so small. If you following along, as you should be, and you hover over it, you should see it referring to the function that says it's going, or that it accesses, which is a member function of actually iOS base class. Uh, we haven't talked about base classes in inheritance yet. Just know that this is a function you can use. And if that's the case, we're just going to, I'm gonna use the error stream and I'm going to say error, I'm gonna say error, write example.txt did not open. And if the only purpose of this program is to work with a file and my file doesn't open, I just want to end things here. I'm in main, so I'll just say return one. Else, if we're here, our file must have successfully opened. So let's just put a little message using C out and say, no, oh, file opened. And we're using C error and C out, so we need the IO stream library for that. All right, let's go ahead and build this. All right, no syntax errors. All right, now what I pointed out before is this file did not example exist. So when I popped open this, 
this file write example.txt does not exist anywhere in my project. Now there's a write example dot underscore dot cpp, it's not the same file. Actually, let's just call this output example so we don't confuse it with the with the uh, CPP file. All right, so output example doesn't exist anywhere on my project. Let's see if it can open the file if it doesn't exist. All right. So I'm going to put cursor here. I'm going to say run to cursor. All right, so we can see that our locals, there's this out foot, foot out file object. There's a lot of information associated with it. We're not going to worry about what all that information is at this point. All right, we know that object is there. We call the open function. If I hit F10 now, let's see if, uh, so the file opened because this was not true. It came down here. All right, if I hit F10 again and we pop open, then the console, right, if I show you that, we see the message. Let's stop the debugger. Now, let's go back and look at the project folder. Notice now in the project folder, there is actually a file called outputexample.txt. It's got zero kilobytes. We didn't write anything to it. The point I wanted to make here is if the file does not already exist, so if we are opening something for writing and it does not already exist, then it will create a file of that name. Right. And then, all right, let's delete this. And let's see the other way we could open the file. So we said the other way we could open it is that we could just use the initialization constructor, give it, so the name of our file was output example.txt, and this should open it for output. And so let's, let's do a run to cursor here. So this will rebuild or we run. At this case, it should have opened our file. If I hit F10, Right. Okay, so it did not go into this code, meaning out file didn't fail. Right. If you have 10, right, if I show you the console window, it pops that open. I'm going to hit stop debugging. If I then pop back open this, you can see once again, I deleted the file so it didn't exist in this environment. What it did is it wrote it to this particular project folder. Now you can have it write to other places on your computer. You would have to provide it the directory path in order for it to write. So it's a little more advanced than what we're going to get when it comes down to working with your homework. I would start working with my files inside the project environment. Later, if you want them in other places, then I would start experimenting with that directory path, right? But start out with the simplest thing you can do. Make sure you get that working. We've written nothing to this file, so we can see that it has zero kilobytes, nothing in memory. All right, I'm gonna delete it again. Uh, delete, all right, that gets rid of it there. All right, now I said the other way you can check to see if a file open. The other way that we can do that is here, I was using in file, we said not in file we could actually call the fail function, right? So just like CN had a fail function, well, these screen members have a fail function as well. So instead of, let me minimize it. Instead of doing this, if this seems a little too hard to remember or understand what's going on, because it's not intuitive, if not out file, think of it if not out file, didn't open it. If we call if out file dot fail, I call that function equal equal true. All right, you don't have to have the equal equal true. You can leave that off. But if we were then to run this, so let's run the cursor. All right, it's rebuilding. All right, if we hit F10, that did not fail either. If we pop open like this, we can see once again, it created this file for us. There's nothing in it, but it created it for us. All right, 
so this example then, right, just showed you how different ways then you could de declare the file object. We use the default constructor. So with the default constructor, we did this. You don't really have to remember this terminology right now. It won't make any sense until after you start writing your own classes and know what a constructor is. But this was the default constructor. All right, when we use that, then we had to call the open method. Otherwise, if we use this initialization method, it's a little more straightforward. Right? We can actually declare it, associate the file stream with it, and open the file. All right, so remember, you have to declare the file stream, associate the stream with a file name by opening it, right? and then after it opens, you have to make sure that it did not fail to open. All right, so well, now let's extend this just a little farther. All right, let's go ahead and write out some information to our file. So we're going to say, let's write an integer value to the file. In order to do that, well, we know here we were just using C out, right? Actually, let's write a string. Let's write a character string. So let's write a, let's write a string to the file. And instead of C out, right, file open, if we replace this with the name of our file stream object, which was out file in this case, this should write it to the file. Right. Now, the other thing I had forgotten to do in our examples, right, I hadn't gotten around to yet, is I said we have to close the file. If we don't close the file, the operating system will do it for us, but if there are other, if there are other things in the system waiting for the file, we always want to make sure that we close the file as soon as we're done with it. So let's uh, close the file, right, and out file got closed. And you don't need a comment like this for every action, like this is kind of apparent we're closing the file. If it helps you to put a comment there, if it helps with your learning, please do so. I'm putting it here right, to remind you of the steps that we're doing. All right, so let's just go ahead and see if we can say start without debugging. All right, so here's what happens, right? We have nothing writing to the screen, right? I have no C out statements in here. Uh, the error statement, right, didn't give us an error because it didn't fail to open this. And so you can see then it just pops up with this press any key to close the window. So I'll press any key, it stopped this from running. Let's go ahead now. And okay, now we can see output example. Actually, it has something in it. Let's just open this up. So actually, let me double click. Um, I've got different options to open it with, but let me just double click. That, and in my case on Windows 10 here, it used notepad to open it. And you can see it wrote our message file open. So it wrote this and actually, it also wrote the new line character of the file. We just can't happen to see that character embedded in here. I didn't open this up with any way to be able to view every single character. All right, so that very simply, we can write a string to our file. Right. Let's change this, so let's, uh, write an integer to the file, all right? So out file, right? You can write 123. And let's put it on its own line. So I'll just say, let's write a couple of integers. So we want to see if Endel puts in a new line. So let's just go ahead and write 456 so that we can see a couple of lines in here. All right, so instead of using C out, we're using this stream operator. The stream operator has something in its class that it knows how to handle the stream. So these are called stream insertion operators. And let's just now say debug, start without debugger, let it rebuild, right? Opens up this. I have no output going to the screen, but let's take a look at our file now. If we open this up, so now we can see we've got this string message on its own line, right? 
starting on the next line, because we use a new line character here, we got the number 123. Starting on the next line, we got 456. So you can also use NL to give it that new line in your file, right, which comes in handy. It'll turn out that you can use precision. So the other flags that you've been using with C out to set the way output looks, you can use all of those here with the file stream operators as well. So there's not a whole lot new to learn out, well, I say outside of the file stream operations, but at least you can reuse something that you already know how to use, which is always good. Right. So basically, we can write any data type to the file, and we can write variables. So if we were to declare something like a, a double, x equals 1 divided by 1, sorry, 0 0.0 divided by 3.0. Let's do that. Let's say out file. And they don't all have to be written on the same, or on different lines. They can be written on the same one. Let's just write x. Let's go ahead and write a new line after it. We don't have to. And say so start without debugging. And let's open up our output example. And so now you can see it wrote the variable stored in memory. So it actually wrote, we ended up with six threes. Can we say set? Oh, it's not set precision, it's just precision. No. I am an app. And what if I said three? All right, so precision three. So let's now rerun this with a precision of three. Let's open up our file. And you can see we just got the three decimal places. So you can see then, right, you can use things like fixed format, scientific format, left alignment, right alignment. So all of those things that we were doing before with see out, you can do that to write columns, to line things up neatly in a file. If you were trying to create some sort of report that you wanted to be open to read or columns of numbers, you can do all of that. The only difference is we use this file stream operator name now. All right, so that's our first example of how to write output to a file. All right, remember we follow these steps of declaring this stream object, associating it with a file, right? a file name. We always check to make sure the file opened correctly. Right? If the file opened, if it doesn't, we terminate the program. Well, in this case, we terminate the program because the rest of our program is dependent on the file being open. So if, if, you're act if you can perform other actions that don't depend on the file, you may not need to exit. Uh, it all depends on your program, always. Right, we're writing this string message. We wrote some integers, right? We wrote a double to the file. You can write characters. Like I said, you can write more than one thing at once. So, and then we close the file at the end. So we had this example. The other thing being, remember, is if the file does not exist, right, then it will create the file. When the file exists, what I didn't mention is it will actually then delete everything that's already in the file and start from the beginning. Now that wasn't readily apparent to us because right, we were writing the same thing and just adding on to the end. But you could try that as an exercise instead of writing this same thing, right? Have some other information in your file and see if it rewrites. Actually, as a matter of fact, let me just pop this open. 
So I can actually write to the file. So I'm going to say adding some extra info. And I'm going to say file save. All right. I'm going to close that. Once again, if we pop this back open, notice that's still there. But now let's rerun this program. Right, let's pop that file back open. Notice then what I wrote is gone. So that's the other thing. If the file already exists and you open it up for output, it will write over what's there. So you can think of it as erasing everything else that's there. If you need to write at the end of the file, that's when you would open it up with, say, this flag like the append flag. So if we do this and start this up again, remember we already had written to the file once. We ran the program again in append mode. So notice then it added the same thing at the end. Right? If we were to run the program say again, and show the file's contents, you can see that it appended it added at the end a third time. So that's how you can use one of those modes if you need to keep what's there and write at the end. All right. So I'm going to call this the end of this tutorial on at least writing output. And we'll start up again with how we handle an input stream in the next tutorial.